okay. Uh, so it's uh, a pure integration, and um, uh, at the end, but in the beginning, it was uh, uh, it was uh, our analysis of the geometry that uh, um, that we, we were facing, and then we recognized the uh, Riemann sum there. Now Riemann sum, then we, we we dealt with the Riemann sum, which gives us ability to approximate things to at least, and then and then we took the limit of the Riemann sum, and we got the Riemann integral. Okay, so that's that's the the plan that we're going to follow uh, through this whole chapter with all uh, the variety of applications. That's a new one. Okay, that that's a new one. Uh, so we we kind of uh, went from dimension three volumes, uh, and now we're doing dimension one again. It, or so it seems because it's rod. It is uh, we we ignore anything uh, anything about its, its thickness and only concentrate on the on the density of the material in it. Okay, um, okay. So that's what we did and. Um, uh, okay, the, the idea is, is primarily uh, primarily here. Um, yeah, well, let, let me actually skip this and look at, look at the uh, at the what what's uh, at the bottom. Uh, so what we have here is a mass distributed possibly non-uniformly through the rod, and we want to find its mass. So so it's it's really uncomplicated, but uh, worth uh, noting that uh, it is it is. Uh, uh, it, it becomes only more complicated than you take when you take the limit. But but ba basically, uh, if you zoom out, you see variability of the density. But really, it is quite possible that if you zoom in, that uh, the density varies uh, incrementally. So it, you might be able to split it into several uh, uh, pieces that have uh, uh, uniform uniform density. Okay, like this whatever so four, 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 four five pieces as you can see uh, and they have uh, different density and then what is uh, uh, suppose they suppose they have all the same length okay and then every every one of them is assigned with uh, with a number of the density so I'll li list the density here linear density once again so say two I don't know could be zero five eight and twenty Okay, so uh, so the different density of different pieces of the rod, and so what the mass is then uh, you uh, multiply the density times um, uh, uh, the sum of of the masses or weights of the pieces, and um, each of them is simply uh, will be the density uh, times uh, the length. Okay, so um, so in this particular case, so I don't know delta x if we choose to be say uh, 0.1, so it will be two times 0.1 plus zero times 0.1 plus five times 0.1 plus eight times 0.1 plus 20 times 0.1. So so if that is the data that you're facing, you don't really have to go into integrals. So if the data you only can you are able to only collect the information in, in this manner, which is incremental, which is what, what you really face if you, you you face a problem like that, you will be facing uh, incremental data. It could be, for example, in the form of, of a spreadsheet. Okay, so so literally you have uh, you w w what you may have done is you went through um, um, you m you have a rod and you may have sampled uh, the different locations uh, within the rod. Okay, and th that that m you m might be just five or might might be five hundred. That doesn't matter. Uh, doesn't make any difference whatsoever. The, the end result is still the same. So you take density, multiply by the length, add them together. There is really no uh, um, uh, calculus in the in the usual sense uh, for for you to worry about. You just add the add these things together, and you, you, that that is uh, you have the answer. Okay. So uh, and then we, we keep it this way for a while, and you you, you can if we have time we can we can certainly uh, um, carry out co computation with uh, with uh, with Excel or, or anything else. Uh, the uh, the only thing is that it doesn't really uh, produce anything that we can we can uh, unless it's a specific problem we, we don't really have anything interesting there unless uh, un unlike what we did in the beginning. Remember we we were able to approximate the area of the uh, circle with nothing but Excel, and then we were able to approximate the volume of a of a of a, of a sphere. Once again, nothing about Excel. So you 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 the result that you get, you match it with the result that you may have known from from high school. Okay, so that that's that's certainly uh, uh, demonstrate the power of of, of simple computations. Uh, here, however, we we are not going to dwell on this. We'll proceed to uh, to the next level, and that is 
uh, take the limit. So delta x goes to zero. Okay. So so in other words, in other words, uh, you you you're not looking at specific uh, rod with variable density which you sample. You cannot sample anything to many points. So that cannot happen in real life. So so then uh, uh, what does it in, what does it have to do with real life? Uh, this is what it might be. You might have a theory about where where that uh, how the rod was produced. Okay, so like I was suggesting there, so you may have had uh, two um, alloys merging together, and your theory is that the uh, the density is changing uh, linearly. Okay, from one to two. Okay, so that's another possibility, or maybe it is uh, in a in a uh, liquid in, in a liquid uh, some some material is be, being settled down and once again you might assume that the there is a particular uh, uh, pattern of of how uh, the material is settling uh, within the within the glass of, of, of liquid so so then then you have a formula you have a formula for the density okay so that is uh, not an incremental change it is a continuous change and so and then then it, you get shortcuts from from calculus Okay, so so then uh, you don't have to do any, uh, you don't have to do addition rather, but you do integration, which is addition with infinitely many uh, terms. Okay, so that is uh, that that's what we did, except when it is linear uh, function, you, you don't have to worry about the um, actual integration because you know it's it's a simple geometry, uh, but uh, but it is it is indeed what what in fact is happening is this uh, the. Uh, the mass is uh, the integral of of a density function. Okay, so uh, so in order to uh, to to connect it back, uh, that 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 actually seems seems to be important is is to uh, to understand that you can go back back and forth uh, from the the formula suggests that you go from the density you go to mass, but it's also possible to go from mass to the density, and that's that's what the next point uh, I, I'm making here was about this one. So if you now weigh the uh, weigh the rod, uh, not the whole rod, but only at the, at the bottom, uh, but for every location of x, and you measure it, and you have some kind of theory about about what what it's uh, supposed to uh, what 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 function it produced, then that function that you create will be the antiderivative and antiderivative of the density function. So so once again. Uh, uh, density function, you integrate, you get uh, mass, you take mass, you differentiate it, you get uh, the density. Okay, so um, that the, the last statement to be con is, is to be confirmed is by um, by this uh, delta uh, delta m over delta x is f. Okay, so so in other words, uh, you you take your piece of uh, piece of the rod. Okay, you uh, you move you you move x from x to x plus delta x over here. Okay, so the length of that interval that that little segment you're looking at is delta x, and then you see by how much the uh, the mass has changed. Okay, so so w what you end up with uh, is the mass of the little piece divided by its length, and uh, uh, well there you go. That's your density. The density is indeed the uh, the uh, the mass over um, over the length uh, also can be seen certainly if you add delta x go to zero then you have instead uh, uh, dm dx equal to f so so uh, m is the antiderivative of f and uh, f is the derivative of f. Okay, so um, let's see. Uh, so a little bit, I, I have a little illustration here, so we can uh, see how the Riemann sums work out here. Okay, so so we have a rod, okay, on the intro AB, and then what happens is we cut it with those uh, x x not x in into pieces, uh, no, not literally, but the, we we concentrate on uh, one piece at a time. Uh, most likely it's uniform, but it doesn't have to be uh, in theory. And then what the, those those points on the right, C1, Tn, uh, they are sample points. Uh, you sample uh, you sample your rod at those locations. And then the assumption is well, that that's the sampling I tried to illustrate on the left. So you, p, you cut a little piece from from the rod and evaluate the density. Okay. So then how do you proceed? Then uh, then then this 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 is a crucial step. 
how the density turns into a function. Because you measure the density, it gives you a number, and you plot that, that blue on the next bottom, bottom, bottom middle bottom, uh, and you plot that number. So as you can see, if you look at those um, uh, densities, uh, uh, you, you, can, you, can, you can say how the density of, uh, uh, on the left are, is higher than the ones the, of the, those three on the left, is higher than those two on the left. So they see they're uh, uh, more white, and the ones on the left are, are darker, more density, okay? So, so in other words, you do end up with a function, okay? You end up with a function of, of densities, um, uh, linear densities uh, plotted in the middle bottom, and then, then what happens is uh, with these densities, uh, if they presume to be to be spread uh, throughout those each of those equals, so the interval is x say x x not x one, okay, then what is the mass? And the mass is the density times uh, the width. Okay, so, so in other words, those rectangles that you see on the right, uh, they uh, represent the masses of, of those pieces of the, approximately, pieces of, of the rod. So once again, the, the ones, uh, the height is once again the, the density, and you can see once again on the left, densities are higher, on the, on the right, density are lower, uh, but the width, uh, widths vary. And the end result is a Riemann sum. So once again, the, the exact same formula, delta x times f, uh, gives you uh, the Riemann sum, and then finally you take the limit, and then hopefully you you catch some uh, some integral that is uh, uh, can be computable. So uh, uh, we, we certainly will look into some some of them, um, but there is really no big uh, uh, big revelation here. It is exactly uh, uh, same integration as as we have done. So it's a Riemann integration from uh, from part one. You can approximate. If necessary, but but uh, but but really, you, you you hope you can hope that you're going to get a function that you can integrate, and then then you're done. Okay. So so the the example that we have had was uh, uh, one. Uh, I could certainly uh, just uh, one more time illustrate that. Uh, so so this is this is the example over here. So we computed and ended up with three. Just just for uh, for extra uh, experience, let me carry out carry out the same example uh, as an integral. Okay, so uh, so then what I have here is so the uh, density varies uh, on the uh, interval uh, zero two, I think, from one to two linearly. Uh, what's the mass? Of the rod. Okay, so um, well you can you can visualize the rod certainly how it is dense here. Whoops, actually it varies from one to two. It so it goes higher and higher rather than lower. And then it's dense on this side. Okay, so this is certainly not very descriptive. Uh, uh, no, nothing. Uh, no computation to carry out, but uh, the description is uh, uh, the verbal description is is uh, good enough, so we can actually plot the the graph here from one to two, one, two, and uh, uh, then this is the density. So this is y equal f of x, the density at location x. Okay, so you can see how it varies, increasing from, from left to right. Okay, and then what we already know is that the, uh, the mass is the integral. From 0 to 2, fx dx, all, you, all remains is just to, uh, to figure out what f is. Uh, what's f? I need a formula in order to uh, carry out the computation. A linear function, how do we how do we plot those? Or how, how do, what's the formula for a linear function? Uh, 
function passes through one point here, another point there. So how do you find it? Linear functions. Slope. Okay, so what's the slope? Uh, rise over the run, so one over two. Rise over the run. Rise is one. Run is two. One half. And uh, uh, so we have the slope. What else do we need? Y intercept, which is intercept is one. So, uh, so the formula then is, uh, I'm sorry, sorry, zero, it is one. Okay, uh, so the formula is then? One half x plus one. X plus one. Okay, so that's what we integrate. Uh, so we have then the mass is equal to integral from zero to two, one half x plus one, dx, we'll just confirm that the, we get the same answer. Uh, so it will be uh, x squared plus x, right, uh, from 0 to 2. And uh, so uh, uh, is it 6? Six. 6. I think I, I had. Uh, uh, and then in that last example, the um, the integral was uh, from zero to one. So it, that, that's how I got three. And this time I have uh, I have my uh, slightly different answer. So uh, so certainly we know that uh, what we have found is the area of this trapezoid. So that's why we can confirm that the answer uh, the answer makes sense. So this is what the mass is, of the integral. So it's the area under the graph. So once again, the, here's the illustration of, of what we have accomplished. Um, so the original problem, uh, a rod with variable density, and then underneath uh, is, is real, uh, if you think mathematically, this is what we're facing. We translated this, uh, this uh, problem of, uh, of uh, kind of real life problem into, into pure mathematics. Uh, with, as you can see, the, the density varies from point to point, from high, then higher, then lower, then high again. Uh, and th that function that will tell you everything about the rod. It is, what, what is the meaning of this function? It is the distribution of material, of the material within the, within the rod. Okay? So uh, what is the point? Uh, I mean, it, it, the, the, the competition was straightforward. Um, and whatever function you pick, it's always straightforward. It's an integral. So, so we, we know how to deal with those. Uh, the point is there are, there are other problems to be asked about, about this and one uh, about those rods sp specifically and that is the, uh, um, uh, it is the, the central mass, the central mass. So, uh, so you have a central mass, you have possibly a uh, non-object that of possibly uh, uh, variable density. So this one is heavier in than this one and so, so you're supposed to balance, that's what the meaning of a central ma mass is that uh, the point where, okay, the point where, where it balances. Okay, so uh, you can do it by experiment, well, as the way I did. There is a, there, you know this method. You're supposed to push them towards each other and they will find the spot like this. Okay, that's another one, okay? So uh, the, the point is, of course, to do it in such a way that it will be computational. So how do we compute ahead of time uh, object that we don't have a real access to and we only know the distribution of weight through it, uh, like this, um, uh, to find where, uh, where the location, the, where it will be balanced. Um, so th that's the next, uh, the next topic, how to find, how to find that point. And, um, well, you can ask yourself what you, what is easier, uh, how do you, where do you balance your, um, where, where is the center of mass of this rod, you think? Left. 
Well, left of center. So if when, when the, the weight is uniform, then it is in the center. Well, this one isn't uniform. If you, you can imagine something uniform, it will be straight in the center. But it has more uh, more mass on the on the to the left of, of the center. So if I just cut it like this, like this, that then you can you can see that there is more weight on the on the uh, uh, to the left than to the right. But it is interesting, actually, to recognize that it is even more visual, that idea, uh, with the function than with the, with the rod itself. So you can actually evaluate the amount of material that you have on the left and on the right. And you can see how that the material on the left is more than the material on the left. And so therefore, uh, this is, it is not going to balance uh, on this point. The question becomes, how far do you pr pr proceed to, uh, to the left in order to, to balance it? The answer is not, uh, uh, you know, split the, uh, the difference. So it's not about entirely about having the, uh, the uh, half weight on the left and half on the right. What, what is that we have to look at? No, no, that's what I said, and I, I, that's not not that's not enough. There, 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 there are other issues to worry about. Anybody familiar with the with the problem? Well, so okay, so let's let's start with that. Uh, so the problem actually is, well, uh, if you think about the seesaw. And the, the, let's make it very simple. And so if you have, uh, you have uh, well, if you have two kids, identical size, then it is, uh, the seesaw is balanced. What if you have a, an adult twice, twice the weight? How do you balance the adult? So one, one kid t t t t gets off. So this, this is the same kid, and now we have an adult who wants to sit. How do you balance? Twice the size. Where do I put the adult to balance? Close to the center. Close to the center. Any idea how closer? Half, half the distance, as a matter of fact, yes. So the, uh, the, the adult, well, I put it two circles to emphasize that we have two. The, the weight is exactly two. Waist, weight, the weight is exactly two, and the, uh, the distance will be half of it then, like this. Okay, so like this. This should be the same. Uh, these two are the same. So half the mass, half the distance. So as you can see, what matters, uh, even though as you can see, the distribution is not uniform. Uh, there is twice as much weight on the left, on the right, and on the left, and yet it is balanced. Why? Because of the, you know what it's called? The leverage, literally. So, so if you have more leverage, uh, you can, you can, it's, it's like, like you f multiply your force. If you have more, that kid uh, balances the, uh, the, the adult because it has more leverage, okay? So, so that's that's the idea behind behind finding uh, finding the center of mass. Um, so, okay. So, well, let's figure out what uh, how how to do it. Um, <coughs> so then we will have once again uh, that, that we don't want to deal with a rod uh, right away because it's, it changes might be changing its density uh, continuously, and so. Uh, it, it just will be more and more of a challenge. So we'll start with literally or, or figuratively uh, um, a seesaw and uh, a bunch of objects uh, or, or of various weights located on it. And so, the, but the idea is, is already uh, already the same, except what we're gonna do to to simplify things, we're gonna we're gonna remove the uh, the balance. We we, have, we we will move the balance in a in a place uh, entirely uh, unrelated. We're not, we we don't know where the central mass is just yet. We we know the the idea. We have to look at the leverage, uh, not just the weight, but also the what's called the uh, either uh, the lever or or um, well, that's pretty much what, what it's called. Uh, so I'm going to put the the weight somewhere here. Not the weight, but the support here somewhere. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, just uh, see the contributions of each of the objects uh, to the imbalance 
of, of this object relative to, to what? It will depend on the, on the mass and it will depend on the level. Okay, so maybe like this. So maybe one, two, and three. Okay, so, uh, so different um, uh, uh, objects depending on different locations will produce uh, different, um, uh, well, let's say forces. Okay, so let's just not worry about uh, that it is balanced. Let's just see what, what they create. Uh, and the, uh, well, th those are called moments, as a matter of fact. So moments are, uh, well, the moments, one, one uh, moment of an object is, um, is mass times the lever. Okay, so uh, so in this particular case, uh, I'll have one here, four, and three. Okay, so th these are the moments. The moments, technically, with respect to to zero. So I put zero over here, so that the reference will be to the same point. Uh, certainly, there is no uh, worry about the balance right now, but uh, as you can see, the, just just uh, see what what uh, the, how it will be uh, pushing on the uh, on the um, oh, pushing down on this uh, on the seesaw. Okay, so so as you can see, the moments are one because the weight is one and the distance is one. The second one is uh, two times two, and the, the, the next one is uh, three times one. So as you can see, uh, the one is uh, uh, the one in the middle is the biggest one, and then the total moment is the sum. So this is the total moment. So a total moment with respect to zero, and then the, uh, the idea is that you're supposed to have uh, um, uh, them balance, balance each other. Okay, so, so, so then where do I put, in this particular case, where uh, the, the place where I'm supposed to put my, my, uh, my um, support uh, should produce uh, the moments canceling each other. So once again, that, that picture at the top indicates what's supposed to happen here because uh, this is moment is, is, well, let's say this is negative two and this is one and two. The weight is two, so this moment is two, and this moment is also two. And this is two and two again. Okay, so, so once again, the, the lever with respect to the point that we, we still haven't found, uh, we were able to just, just uh, use our common sense to find where, how to balance that, balance that seesaw, but, but really we, we were looking for an algebraic way, way to understand it. So, so once again, we, have, uh, uh, we want two moments. These moments are with respect to zero, but let's let's now say suppose it's not zero. Well, let's say it is zero for the time being. So what we want is um, uh, the so the object or objects are balanced when the moments, uh, rather uh, the moment is, uh, the total moment is zero. In order to understand the statements, we have to be careful because uh, I, say the, I said the lever without being very specific about it. There is no doubt what mass means. It's just, just a number, okay? But the lever actually matters, as you can see now, whether you are to the left or to the right of the, uh, of the support, okay? So it means that the, uh, it's not the distance that we're talking about. So lever is not really the distance. It's, it's, it's the coordinate, okay? So, so then the moment is, is the mass times the coordinate. 
So which means that the ones on the right will produce positive moments and the ones on the left will produce negative moments and they, uh, they have to be uh, uh, canceled out. Okay, so, um, so let's, let's take that, that, that object again, so, um, uh, yeah, let's take this one again, this is zero, uh, this is uh, mass one, mass two, okay, so, so then uh, um, one, the negative one, uh, negative two, and this is one, and this is two, and this is one. So moment is uh, so once again the, these are this is uh, co these are coordinates. So they are the levers. Uh, these are the masses. And then if I put it together, I have what are the moments? And the moments are negative two and two. I add them together, and I have zero. So that's that means balance. Okay, so uh, l l let's do a, a, another example just just to see how, how it works out. Um, let's once again do it with zero, uh, and let me uh, well, let, suppose I have an adult here, still a two. This is one. Um, okay, so well, l l let's ask ourselves the question. So suppose I, I still have the same setup, and I have a, a, a kid and adult. One and two, okay, they're balanced. And now suppose I have, uh, how do I mess it up a little bit? Or what if, uh, what if another adult sits here at the very end of the seesaw? So, uh, and we, we have uh, several kids available. Where do we put the kids in order to balance this? So I see the picture, right? So, so the same uh, uh, kid on the left, uh, and the, I have another adult uh, on the right. So at location one, location two. So how do we balance uh, the whole thing? So I, I, there's too much weight on the right. I want to balance it. Uh, so where do I put the kids, and how many kids do I need? How many kids do I do? You do you think you you'd need in general? Uh, can you explain the? Did you do computations, or did you, you did you just you know common sense? So the bell, uh, the um, uh, the moment on the uh, no hold on uh, the uh, the moment on the right is six, right? It is two plus four. So moment on the uh, six. While here we have a moment only of, uh, that is available is negative two. Okay, so we need four more. So either you have four kids. I could they, they, I cannot place. I would I could place four kids here, but you know I don't want to stack them. Uh, so the and. Uh, um, So, so once again, if I put a kid uh, at location one, that's not going to do it, right? And I cannot put several kids in the same spot. So where, where do I do it? Well, what was the suggestion? Uh, a kid at negative one and a kid at negative three. At negative three. Yeah, that, that would work. So I put one more. So I put one extra adult here. And then we're adding uh, more kids, one here and one there. Okay, so that adds negative one uh, moment here and uh, a negative three moment there. Okay, so let me make that clear again. Six, so this was uh, four and two, add, add, add. So negative six, six, and we have zero. So zero moment is zero and we have uh, the weight uh, the weight uh, zero. Uh, I'm sorry. The um, uh, the moment, the total moment, uh, is zero. Uh, by the way, I, uh, are there any other uh, possibilities for the, where to uh, put the kids? Is it possible to do it any other way? Oh, 
That's right. Uh, one kid at, at negative six. So, I don't know, here somewhere. One kid at, at negative six. That, that will do this, have the same effect. So it doesn't matter how many adults you put on one side. You, if you have, if you are at seesaw long enough, you can have put the kids, kid so far away, the edges will balance all of these adults. Okay, so that's, 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 that's the leverage. The idea of leverage that you can overcome whatever, whatever you have there. Okay, so let's, let's turn into, uh, this into algebra. Well, so far it was, uh, uh, the equation was, uh, if, if, I, uh, if I may, so suppose, uh, suppose um, uh, mi is, is the mass or weight located at x sub i on the x-axis. So, so these are the masses that we're looking at, and x i is the, uh, the these locations. So how many uh, maybe n n n objects located on the x-axis uh, with respect to uh, with masses attached to to each of those locations? Okay. So then uh, the total mass uh, total moment is simply sum m i x i i from 1 to n. Okay? So, uh, and then what we say, what we conclude from based on, on our analysis, uh, then uh, the system of, of weights is balanced at zero if the total moment is zero. Okay, so um, as you can see, it's uh, um, uh, it solves solves solve our problem. So all of these weights times leverages cancel each other out, uh, and we do do have a balance. Uh, but it only gives us the, the uh, condition when we are uh, forced to have our um, support at the origin. Okay, so so the problem is solved, but uh, uh, we need the, the, this is the how to solve sum m i x i is equal to zero i from one to n. So that is the condition of the uh, uh, for what the condition uh, uh, for the origin to be the support. So okay, uh, so that is inconvenient uh, obviously because um, you have to ahead of time decide that uh, uh, where where the balance is going to be and then with respect to that. Or, or that point, you have to locate the uh, the objects. In, in fact, the the opposite is is uh, more likely to uh, to be the case when you have uh, in some un, 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 uh, unspecified or specified but uh, un, un pre 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 not predetermined way, uh, these masses are located maybe entirely uh, uh, to the right of the of the origin, and then uh, that we still should be able to handle uh, the problem of finding the uh, uh, the the center of mass. So this this is what I'm talking about. Uh, I still, uh, even though the uh, the moments are there, uh, the weights are there. Uh, however, it is not balanced because they are all all three objects lie to the right of the origin. So so, but then the question remains: Where is the uh, the center of mass? In fact, we probably we can guess where the center of mass is. It's two. It's supposed to be a two. Okay. So all right. So what do we do with this this statement, which is uh, the result of our analysis, or what do we do with it uh, in order to, uh, to speak of, um, to be able to solve the problem for uh, system is balanced at, at other points, at other point, which is unknown. So in other words, we're going to produce uh, uh, equations that give us that point. So what do we have to change here? And the answer is simple. We simply have to measure the moments, or rather, uh, the levers, uh, with respect to that point, which we still don't know what it is. So this is how, how it works. So the moment uh, with respect to, to C is, well, you, you can guess probably, so if x, uh, if m x i, the, these are our moments. It is the mass multiplied by the lever. But x, what is x i? It is simply the distance 
uh, to the origin. Okay, now we have to look at the distance, not to the origin, but to C. So we replace Xi with what? So Xi is the sine distance to the origin. Also known as its coordinate. Coordinate is the sine distance to the origin, so that to the right is positive, to the, to the left is negative. So that, that's the meaning of sine. Okay, uh, and now we replace origin to with uh, something else. So what is the sine distance uh, to, to C. So if Xi is the sine distance to the origin, the coordinate, then what is the sine distance to C? So this is zero, this is Xi, so the, the number I'm talking about is this, this, okay, so this is the, what I'm talking about, this one, and now I have a C somewhere else, hypothetically, suppose my C is over here, what is the Sine, sine distance to C. This is, the, my, this is my new lever. We are not interested in the lever with respect to the origin anymore. We want to measure it to some un, un, unspecified point C. Okay? So, so I replace XY with X what? what say it again? XC. <coughs> Equals to? Uh, well, what is between X and C? Well, well, just look at the picture. So the, the, uh, the, uh, well, how about I put it here? So the red one uh, was the, um, um, uh, the red one is the uh, lever with respect to the origin. Now, what is the lever with respect to C? Isn't that just Xi minus C? It is. It is simply Xi minus C. That's right. So, so that this is what I, I put here. This is my new lever, and this is Xi. Okay. And uh, all I have to do is just to subtract, uh, and that gives me the one sine distance. Once again, as you can see. When that difference, xi minus c, is positive, we are to the right of c. When it's negative, we are to the left of c. And, uh, and it is so the sign is there, and the distance is naturally uh, simply the magnitude, the, the absolute value of that, of that thing. And c could be to the left or to the right of the origin. It doesn't make uh, any difference whatsoever. Okay? So then, uh, then our condition, the balance equation, if you, if you like, is some, same, same stuff, so M doesn't change, right? The number of, uh, of, of things that we encounter doesn't change, and we have simply Xi minus C equal to zero uh, is our new uh, balance equation. Okay? So that is the equation C has to satisfy to be the balance, the, the support, the central mass. So uh, if C satisfies the equation, it is called the center mass of the system. OK? Okay, so um, let's uh, so so it is it is an equation. So we got to solve it. We got just all we have to do is just to solve it. So solve for c. Uh, it's it's really not complicated because it splits into two. I simply factor it out. So it is equal to sum m i x i minus m i c i. Right. So uh, the uh, the first term is actually mi xi is the familiar term, right? 
that that term is still the uh, the lever. Uh, I'm sorry, the uh, uh, the moment moment with respect to the origin. Okay, but we are after C. So what do we do? We just split it split it up. We have some m i x i minus some m i c i. No, right, there's no c i. I'm sorry, there is no c i. It's just a c, just a single number. So you see how I simplify it next? What do I do with the last term? Well, let me identify. This is the total moment with respect to 0. And then I say I can simplify. What do I do with C? I have summation by the same number. What do I do with it? It's like M uh, M1C plus M2C plus M3C. What do I do with those? I, I factor C out. So I'll have C sum. M I. Okay. What's the meaning of the sum? The total mass. Okay, so everything what comes out of this formula is, is meaningful, and then the whole thing is supposed to be zero, so now I, I solve for C. So uh, C is equal to, uh, what is it, sum, mixi, from 1 to n, that is my total moment with respect to zero of the whole system. So in other words, I'm talking about this, this, ex this expression over here, the total moment uh, with respect to zero, and then I divide by the total mass. OK, so we have solved the problem. We have a formula for, uh, for the total uh, mass. OK, so, uh, so what I'm going to do next is uh, I'm going to just do it, carry it out. So I mean, the formula is, is very useful. We can, we can really find uh, where, where to balance things. So we'll do, just do it next time.